Hello, I'm Jen from Cakey Lulu's, brand ambassador for Prop Options, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a number of different techniques to use with your Prop Options clear tier cake separator. When you're using a clear tier with your cake, it's really important to make sure it's securely attached. So with a dummy cake, I would use some royal icing, ganache or buttercream in the same colour that I've decorated the cake and spread a thin layer on the top and then attach your clear tier in place. For a real cake tier, it's really important to dowel your cake properly so that it can support the weight of the tiers above. And after doing that, I would just again add some royal icing buttercream or ganache, again in the same colour that your cake's decorated in, and attach your clear tier in place. Now once your clear tier is in place, sometimes you can still see the marks where your dowels went in, or where you spread your royal icing, buttercream or ganache to secure the clear tier. And so to completely disguise that, I like to roll out some sugar paste in the same colour as my cake, and then lifting the lid of the clear tier and then picking up your sugar paste, place it in the bottom of the clear tier, pushing it down and making sure it meets the edges. And then when you replace the lid, all those marks are completely disguised. So then to add the top tier, again, I would add some royal icing, buttercream or ganache onto the top of the clear tier and then lift and secure your top tier in place. A really simple and effective way to use your clear tier is to fill it with fairy lights. So here I've got some battery powered LED fairy lights and to put them into the separator all I need to do is remove the lid and arrange them in place. Once you're happy with the positioning make sure that the wire is coming out of the back of your cake design and replace the lid. Then all that's left to do is disguise the battery pack, which can be easily hidden by putting it at the back of your cake, either securing it to the cake or the cake board using some royal icing. Another way to use your clear tier is by putting a cake inside it. And to do that, I'm actually going to use it upside down using the lid as a base, which will make it easier to remove afterwards. So here I have a nine inch round dummy tier, which I've decorated. Remember, if you're using a real tier, you need to dowel it properly first. And then I've got an eight inch wide, six inch tall round clear tier. And inside that is going to go my six inch wide, five inch high other cake tier. So first of all, I need to bring in my cake. And then I need to attach the lid to the top of the cake using some royal icing, ganache or buttercream. Remember to put it upside down. And then once that's secure in place, you need to add some more royal icing, ganache or buttercream onto the top of the lid and bring in your real tier. Once that's secured in place, you need to bring in your clear tier turning it upside down and carefully place it over the top of your cake. And then that's ready for another tier to go on top, whether it's real cake or another clear tier. To decorate your clear tier using pressed flowers, you'll need your clear tier. Here I have a six inch round by four inch high clear tier. You'll need some tweezers, a paintbrush, some edible glue or egg white, a piece of kitchen roll to dab off any excess glue, and your pressed flowers. Now I'm going to put my pressed flowers inside the clear tier, so I need to remove the lid first. And then squeezing out some edible glue, I'm going to take my paintbrush and dab it into the glue, wiping off any excess so that I've not got too much on there. Choose a flower, dab a little glue on top of the front of the flower because that's the side that's going to show. And then use my tweezers, lift up the flower and carefully press it into place where I would like it. And then repeat with your other flowers. 
So again, I'm going to get some edible glue, paint it on the front of my flower, and then using my tweezers, I'll line it up in place where I'd like the flower to go and push it into place. To stencil on your clear tear, you'll need your stencil, a scraper, some royal icing and a spatula, a bowl and your clear tear. Here I've got a six inch square clear tear and I'm actually going to put it on its side to stencil. So removing the lid and carefully turning it on its side, I'm going to get my stencil and I'm going to place it on top, lining it up with where I'd like the pattern to be. And then using some royal icing, I'm going to spread it over the top of my stencil. And then taking my scraper, I'm going to scrape away the excess. Then I need to repeat that to stencil the whole pattern. Once you've covered the entire side and scraped away the excess, it's time to peel away the stencil to reveal the pattern. Now you'll have a few edges which need to be cleaned up, but after that you can let it dry and stencil the other sides of your clear tear. To semi-cover your clear tear in sugar paste, you'll need your clear tear, a paintbrush and some cool boiled water or edible glue, a cutting wheel, a cake smoother, your sugar paste and some acetate. So here I have a six inch round, six inch tall clear tear and I've trimmed my acetate by placing it around the clear tear and trimming it so that I know it's the same length as the circumference of my clear tear. And then I've rolled out my sugar paste to the same size as that piece of acetate. Now what I need to do is trim my sugar paste to the shape that I'd like. So I'm gonna get my cutting wheel and I'm going to trim that. take away the excess, and then I'm gonna hold it up to my clear tear to see that I'm happy with the shape before I attach it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I just need to round off some of the edges. So again, using my cutting wheel, I'm just going to trim the edges to get the shape that I want. Now that it's the shape that I want, I'm going to add some water to the sugar paste and using the acetate, I'll lift it up to attach it to the clear tear. So bringing in my cooled boiled water, again, you can use edible glue. I'm going to wipe away the excess and then just spread it completely over my sugar paste. Now it's important to make sure that your sugar paste isn't too wet, it just needs to be sticky to the touch and then it's ready to attach. So bringing back my clear tear, I'm going to use the acetate to help me lift the sugar paste onto the clear tear. And then using my cake smoother, I'm going to push it in place. Then I'm going to remove the acetate. And once again with my smoother, I'm just going to go over and make sure it's completely in place. You can also use your hand. 
Now, as you can probably see, I've got quite a few air bubbles. And so to deal with those, I'm just going to get an acupuncture needle, which is clean and sterile. And prick little holes inside the bubbles. And then use my hand again to smooth the air bubbles out. And if that's not working, all you need to do is just peel up the sugar paste slightly and then smooth out those air bubbles. And if that's made your edge slightly untidy, just get your cutting wheel again and trim the edges to tidy it up. And now your clear tear is semi-covered in sugar paste. Another really easy way to decorate your clear tear is by filling it with flowers. Now this can be fresh flowers, sugar flowers, or today I'm using some artificial flowers. With fresh flowers, you can even put some oasis in the middle so that your flowers can attach inside and will be able to drink throughout your event. So to fill the clear tear with my flowers, I need to remove the lid. Here I've got a six inch square, four inch tall clear tear. And I'm going to place my leaves in first because I want them to be at the bottom. And once my leaves are in place, I'm going to put my flowers in. So carefully picking them up. Remember, you want your flowers pointing out so you can see the front of the flower rather than just the side of the flower. And place them in and arrange them, moving them about until you're happy with how it looks. And then replace the lid and you're ready to attach it to your cake. To paint on your clear tear, you'll need a bowl with some boiling water and a plate over the top, some cocoa butter to melt and edible dust colours, a piece of kitchen roll to dry your paintbrush, and a paintbrush for painting, a dry paintbrush for blending the colours, and your clear tear. So here I've got an eight inch round, six inch high clear tear, and I've already painted some flowers. I'm just going to add a few more details to the stems and the leaves. So here I've mixed some white and some green with a little bit of yellow and my cocoa butter to make a paint. And I'm just going to turn the tear so that I can see it as I paint. And collecting some paint on my paintbrush, I'm just going to brush it onto the stems of my flowers just to add a little bit of detail. And then using a little bit of darker paint, you can add some shading and more detail to your picture. And then if you get your dry brush, you can blend those colors together. And then you can add more details in to finish your design until you're happy with how it looks.